This video is about inviting 50 strangers to try and stay inside a giant jello cube the longest and the winner gets $100. You thought it was about tech news, but I tricked you. But really, it is about tech news, and I've just tricked you again. <laughs> Almost too easy. China is upping their gaming GPU game with the Li Swan 7G106 announced this weekend alongside the professional focused 7G105. And it seems like it can indeed play games. That's number one, you gotta get that down first. Now last week, an OpenCL Geekbench result for the 7G106 was spotted by BenchLeaks. And in a rare occurrence, that exact score from the result was cited in Lee Swan's official presentation. The 7G106 is notable for being the first six nanometer gaming GPU from a Chinese company. And while it's no RTX 5090, it was shown pushing more than 70 FPS in the fairly demanding Black Myth Wukong at 4K, potentially due to the company's NRSS upscaling tech and giving the RTX 4060 and 5060 a run for their money in a few mostly synthetic benchmarks. It's actually a similar story for another Chinese GPU, the More Threads MTTS90, which just had some of its benchmarks spread around Chinese social media, despite actually being announced quite some time ago. Now there's very little information about price or release date for either of these GPUs, but the Trump administration did just temporarily drop some trade restrictions for semiconductors to make China happy. So maybe there's hope that US gamers could have another alternative to buying Nvidia graphics cards, since AMD also seems distracted, like Nvidia, by the AI hardware market and Intel. I mean, well, they're just trying to stay alive. It's like they got Thanos snapped, but they're like holding onto their physical form for a bit longer. It's like Peter did while well, he stopped. I'm gonna cry. Google pushed out a mandatory update for Pixel 6a phones earlier this month, nerfing their battery performance because if they didn't, the phone's batteries might explode. Except for at least one phone, it apparently didn't work. Reddit user Footy Manager Addict posted on the Google Pixel sub that despite applying the firmware update, his 6A still caught fire while he was asleep. Rude. It ignited his sheets, but he managed to throw it onto the floor so he could take some, frankly, kind of artsy pictures of it. A testament to Google's treachery. They got rid of the don't be evil slogan and look what happened. <laughs> While there were a handful of notable reports of Pixel 6a's blowing up before the update, this is the first one to reportedly occur post update. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission issued a recall for the phones on Friday, but surprisingly, there hasn't been much reporting on this issue overall. It's possible people just thought this was normal behavior for Pixels. UKIE, a major games industry trade association in the UK, has released a statement in support of platforms like Steam having creative freedom in what games they can host as long as it's properly classified by rating systems like Peggy. The statement follows Steam taking down dozens of adult games and indie game store itch.io following suit by de-indexing not safe for work titles after pressure from payment processors who were themselves being pressured by an activist group called Collective Shout, a name that won the group's name competition after just barely edging out Bellow Together and United Squeal. They're very literal. Despite making it their mission to protect women by banning adult games from platforms, indie developers seem to largely disagree. And the whole episode has really just motivated the public to ask why we're giving moral authority to the people who make money off of missed credit card payments again? Maybe we should be asking about today's sponsor. Zero Bounce, the experts in helping businesses make sure their emails actually reach people's inboxes. I mean, we've all sent an email just to say we sent the email, but that's not, Zero Bounce isn't about that. It checks email lists to remove invalid or fake addresses and gives some useful info about them. Because if the people behind those accounts have changed jobs or email providers or just used a burner account to get a free download, your cleverly marketed email is gonna feel so dumb when it gets there. It's gonna look back at you like, 
Why did you do this to me? 28% of emails go bad every year. Zero Bounce keeps your email list clean. It's API ready with integrations for HubSpot, Zapier, and more. So it's no surprise it's helped brands save thousands in wasted sends. It's also private with SOC type two certification and GDPR compliance built in. Try Zero Bounce now and get 20% off with code TL20 on any plan. I'm sorry for tricking you earlier. The following quick bits are about the people in Jello thing. Except they're not, it's more tech news. Calm down, it's just a prank. You don't have to get weird about it. Following GPD's announcement, I and Neo have announced they're building their own handheld powered by AMD's beastly Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, AKA Strix Halo. And unlike GPD's version, it's got a built-in battery. Ooh, like most handhelds. Uh, this unit called the Aya Neo Next 2 was announced at the end of a nearly five hour two part live stream as the second one more thing bonus announcement. Then as the one more thing three, they announced they're making an Aya Neo phone with a slider design. I don't think you can keep doing more uh, things and calling it one more thing. I'm never gonna trust you again if you do that. But you can release a new line of budget handhelds and call it Conquer. Conquer, Conquer, Conquer. I'll allow it. Another Geekbench result for Nvidia's mysterious upcoming N1X processor has made it somewhat less mysterious. The result lists the chip specs, including 20 CPU cores and 48 compute units, which should give it some decent gaming chops. But the specs also seem to match up almost exactly with Nvidia's GB10 super chip, which powers the DGX Spark line of mini AI PCs. I mean, I don't know why I was expecting something new. This is Nvidia. They'll probably just release a new upscaler and claim the new one's 69 times better. Yeah, I said 69, laugh! Laugh. <laughs> Meta is fielding yet another copyright infringement lawsuit over AI training, this time from adult film production studios, Strike Three Holdings, and Counterlife Media. The names today. The lawsuit alleges Meta has been continually torrenting and crucially seeding the studio's copyrighted smut since 2018 and thus affected the studio's ability to compete in the market for their own content. Now, you may remember, this is the exact type of argument that the judge in Meta's last copyright lawsuit recommended that future plaintiffs use if they actually wanna win. Meaning, porn studios might just be about to take Meta down. Wait, why was Meta torrenting so much porn? And researchers at Columbia University have developed robots that they say can consume other robots to get bigger and stronger. <laughs> like what your grandma promised would happen if you ate your oatmeal. And I don't know if you look at the paper, it's kind of misleading. It's more like the robots, which are little six inch rods. They're not really consuming each other. They're squirming around and combining with other robots to form structures that themselves squirm around. They actually kind of remind me of the microbots from Big Hero 6, except those didn't make me extremely uncomfortable. What is the goal in this shot? What are they trying? I want to tell these bots to get a room. And I want to tell you to come back here on Wednesday for more tech news, or hey, whatever else we might make a video about. <laughs> we might throw you another curveball, and <laughs> uh, it'll be about tech news.